Hello, welcome to the Dow Farm. We're in Sunderland, Maryland, Calvert County, and I'm Margaret Dow. I'm standing on what is an historical tobacco farm. This farm has been in my family since 1722. I grew up on this tobacco farm. I grew up working in the fields with my father and my siblings and other relatives. Um, my father was Leroy Dow. This is a photo that I took of my father many years ago. He's posing with his pet rooster, Pete. And my father was the last Dow to actually farm here to make a living with the tobacco. I'm sharing a portrait of him today because my first painting that I'm going to share with you is um, an oil painting that I did of a memory that was always very, very, has been always very, very important to me. Um, my dad had a huge garden, and one of the things that I remember the most being a child was him walking into the house with the bounty that he had grown. Okay, the first painting is called Leroy's Gifts. And in this painting, I show the, t the, the tomatoes that my dad grew on the farm. The tomatoes he grew were organic. He didn't use pesticides and I made them look a little bit imperfect because when you're growing organic, that happens. Um, my dad's hands were truly that large. My dad was six foot four. He had very, very big hands and they served him really well as a farmer. Um, with this painting, I used in the background soil that came from his garden and to make it more visually interesting, I went out in my yard and found a few uh, white roses and threw some white rose petals in there to add a little spark to the background. I told my dad when we were doing this painting that I was going to make his hands famous. And this painting was actually shown in numerous shows. It actually won a national painting competition. Um, and whenever the painting was shown close by to where he lived, he would go with me to the openings and he was always pretty tickled when people would make a fuss over his hands. Oh, these are your hands. And he would put his hands out there and the ladies would hold his hands and he would feel really, really happy about that. Anyway, uh, the title of this piece is uh, Leroy's Gifts. The next piece that I'm going to show you is the first of my tobacco series. This piece is entitled um, Tobacco in My Veins. And the veins of the tobacco there sort of echo the veins that the veins of mine that I feel this whole tobacco experience still runs through. Um, when you grow up working in the tobacco fields, the the smell of the tobacco, the gum of the tobacco, the feel of the tobacco, it's always with you. It stays with you for a lifetime. And this particular piece was one of the first in which I investigated um, going back to a time when we did uh, raise tobacco. And speaking of raising tobacco, um, the tobacco buyout changed the culture of Calvert County as it did in other uh, counties in Southern Maryland. Um, a way of life sort of disappeared and the tobacco buyout, if you took the tobacco buyout, you were not allowed to grow tobacco ever again or touch it ever again. My dad did not take the tobacco buyout and I, because of that, I today can raise some tobacco and I still do. I raise tobacco not to sell for cigarettes, but I raise it for conversation, for educational reasons, um, and just because I want to, to honor our ancestors. Okay, the title of this piece is Tobacco in My Veins. Okay, the next piece is called um, Calvert County Tobacco for Our Ancestors. And this piece is inspired by the S.L. Brady Farm in Cheneyville, Maryland. This piece shows the type of tobacco that's called Burley. The tobacco that we grew here on this farm was a brand called 609. The tobacco that I grow still here on this farm is a 609. This is the Burley that became very popular in later years. The Burley in 609 differed uh, a bit in that the Burley was more yellow. The 609 we grew was not this um, green, was green and not this yellow. Also, the way it was handled, you see the TP type of stacking that's done here. Um, that was created so that the 
tobacco could stay out in the field for like three days before it had to go to the barn. With a 609, we put it in smaller stacks and then we had to take it to the barn right away. The, um, the sky in this particular piece is a little bit ominous, uh, very dark, and some people uh, cite that as contributing to the melancholy feel of, of this piece, the, the, the longing for a culture that, that is no longer in existence. Um, the bottom of the piece has a little touch of the universe in there. Um, the uni using the universe in some of my pieces has been kind of like a signature for me. It's suggesting that we're just a little bit of time. This tobacco business was just in Southern Maryland was just a part of time and, and that's it. Anyway, um, this particular piece is called For Our Ancestors Calvert County Tobacco. The next piece is called Touching the Past. I told you that I live on the farm that has been in my family since the 17, early 1700s and their labor has not been lost on me. Um, the tobacco that you see in this painting, actually I grew and, and hung and dried, and I used my own hand to, um, to uh, show, really literally show me touching the past. And you see a little bit of the universe that's kind of shining through um, in the uh, upper middle of the painting. Okay, the title of this piece is Touching the Past. Okay, the next piece is called Searching for Glory. Searching for Glory. This is a picture of a tobacco top. Um, tobacco, when it was used by our indigenous population many, many years ago, was for medicinal purposes, was for spiritual celebrations. Um, later, as we know, companies came along and created something called cigarettes and many, many people got addicted to tobacco use and it became sort of a bad word. Okay, what's been really interesting um, recently is that tobacco has actually been used for research to create vaccines for viruses. It began with the Ebola virus in, about five years ago. And today, as I speak, there are biotech researchers, biotech companies that are growing tobacco in greenhouses, infusing them with the proteins in the coronavirus, and then harvesting the tobacco to create a vaccine. So, I love the title of this one, Searching for Glory. I think the glory may come back. Okay, the next piece is, um, is just simply entitled Blackberries. Um, on the farm, in addition to having a huge garden and, and growing everything else that we grew, um, there were wild blackberries and also we planted some domestic blackberries. My mom used to uh, uh, can everything in the garden and she also canned the blackberries. She made blackberry jelly and that's the only jelly that we ate all year long. Anyway, um, these, I still grow blackberries at the farm and this is an example of the berries from this year on my farm. And the uh, universe once again shows up uh, at the bottom of the painting. Anyway, this piece is simply entitled Blackberries. Okay, this next piece is entitled Air Cure Tobacco, Calvert County Tobacco. Uh, this piece was done specifically for an art show that was entitled The Barn Show, which was going to be held at the Linden Historic Society in Prince Frederick. Um, I was contacted um, a few years before, a few months rather, before this show was to happen uh, to see if I would participate. And well, hello, there were barns on my farm, so yes, I needed to do this. Um, I thought about depicting the whole barn and then I thought, well, people see these barns all the time, but they don't necessarily know what these barns are used for. So I decided that with my piece, I was going to share what the barn was used for. So in this piece, um, I used tobacco once again that I had planted, that I had cut, that I'd speared, that I had hung in the barn. And, um, and in the background, you see little bits of the universe kind of showing um, up in there. Anyway, this piece will be on display in March of 2021 at the Linden Society in, in uh, Prince Frederick. And this, of all of my original pieces that you're seeing today, this is the only one that will actually be for sale. 
this piece, the sale of this piece will go to, part of it will go to Linden and the other part will go to restoring the schoolhouse, the old one room schoolhouse in Sunderland. It's a schoolhouse that was in operation from 1820 to 1920. It's located right across from All Saints Church in Sunderland and proceeds from the sale of this piece will um, be going towards that effort. Okay, so this piece is entitled Air Cure Tobacco. Okay, um, the last piece that I'm going to share with you is a piece that's not related to the farm, but it was actually painted here on the farm. Um, I'm a teacher and an educator. Locally, I have taught for many years for the College of Southern Maryland. And I have a variety of types of artwork that I do. The farm series that I'm showing you is just one part of the kind of art production that I do. They're all painted here at Dow Farm. Um, this piece, which is entitled Brash, is, um, is, is a portrait that I did of a woman who volunteers many, many, many years of her life towards writing poetry about the work of visual artists. And she specifically works for works within the context of the big show automatic that happens periodically in the DC area. Anyway, this piece is to honor her and her work. So in this piece, um, you see the, the poet with multiple arms that has to do with the energy and the effort in which she uh, uses to create these poems. You see the butterflies in black and white. The butterflies are to represent the literary um, uh, context of the poetry. Uh, you see the pens and the little notebooks she's holding. Those are the tools of the trade. And then once again, you see a little bit of the universe that's in the background. This piece was recently shown at the Madden Woman Creek Art Center in Smallwood State Park. And uh, the piece there won first prize, which was kind of fun. But um, I also want to just talk for just a little bit about that venue. Um, the Matta Woman Art Center in Small Ward State Park is a gem of an art center. And so I want to encourage any viewers who like art, who have not been to that venue, to go check it out. It's open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, and they showcase a lot of local work, but also they do regional works like they did for this particular show. Okay, in closing, I want to just um, say that the works, I told you there was only one work that was actually for sale. But uh, prints are available of absolutely everything. So, um, if you are interested, if any of these works speak to you, or if you know that they might speak to someone in your family, someone who was connected with uh, some of the topics that I was sharing with you today, um, prints are available. My email is mdowart at aol.com, and just uh, shoot me a note about which print you might be interested in. Uh, prints are about 25 bucks a piece plus shipping. Um, I try to make them very, very affordable. I try to promote uh, the history of this area as much as I can with my work. It's been um, a goal of mine ever since I've landed back on the farm, which now has been about nine years ago. Anyway, thank you for your time. I'm glad you could spend this little bit of time with me at Dow Farm.